Absolutely. Can I ask a question at this point? If you surprised a hippo... <laughs> if, if surprise is the key, if you surprised a hippopotamus, do you think a man could knock it out? Only Mike Tyson. <laughs> But just to clarify, you think it's theoretically possible, but you don't know anyone that's ever done it? Yeah, I think it's so highly improbable that it could not happen. I will take that as an answer. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> well, that's nearly all the questions we've had sent in this week. But Rita, you're our special guest. Do you have a question for us this evening? Yes. What is more important to the planet, birds or fish? What do you reckon it is? Birds, but I have no idea why. <laughs> I bet there's some explanation that you're going to find. All right, David, can you see what you can... I will. ..find out? Which... Yep. Are you a bird man or a fish man, David? I'd always go for the chicken over the fish. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon is more important, fish or birds? To the... uh, birds, Rob. I think birds as well. What do you think? Because they can... Uh... Oh, I'm just going to go around. Let me just go wrong the line first. Lloyd, what do you think? Birds or fish? Fish, definitely. Adam, uh, fish. <laughs> fish are more important. I'd miss. I'd miss them both. I'd hate to wake up in the morning and not hear birds tweeting. Yeah. But then I'd hate to wake up at all if I couldn't have fish fingers. <laughs> I, think, I think if you woke up, woke up to the sound of fish song, that wouldn't be as appealing, <laughs> would it? <laughs> Have you got any other facts for us? There's, there's a clip here where the, the fish and the birds try to settle the question for us. <laughs> But they push the herring within range of the gulls. It's a feeding frenzy. <laughs> that is pretty cool, huh? That, that technically wasn't a fish, it was a mammal. <laughs> there are loads exa of examples of why um, birds are really important in terms of keeping down uh, insects and mice and stuff. Like, um, like <laughs> farmers, if you didn't have, like, without the cockerel, farmers wouldn't get up. And then... <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true, without the farmer, obviously. Well, without, without a cockerel, a farmer would go into a lifetime coma. <laughs> <laughs> Cocker hasn't gone off, I'm going to stay asleep for 60 years. Without the farmer, there is no food chain, there's no industry, there's no... You've got to look at the knock-on effect of this. You take the cockerel out, the whole of our food chain collapses. <laughs> I, I've, said, I've said this before, I know, but the, the trouble with this is you genuinely believe it. <laughs> I think there's an element of truth in it. There's an element of truth <laughs> that a cockerel is nature's alarm clock. <laughs> and, and without it, farmers would sleep for a lifetime, there would be no milk produced, the economy would collapse, everyone would die without a cockerel. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's a misconception that roosters just crow when the sun comes up, cockerels crow whenever they feel like Absolutely, it. Absolutely, they crow... They know because they've got an internal body clock. Whenever they feel like it. No, they just... <laughs> They no, don't just crow whenever they feel like it. They've got discipline. <laughs> what happened there was David said uh, that they, they crow whenever they feel like it and you interpreted that sentence as being in order to wake up farmers. Everybody <laughs> knows a cockerel crows to wake people up. They don't just crow when they feel like it, do Again, they? Again, there's a misconception that roosters just crow when the sun comes up. Cockerels crow whenever they feel like it. <laughs> they, clearly don't, they clearly don't crow whenever they feel like it, do they? I've got the computer, I'm right. All right. <laughs> they have to crow at... They crow at dawn. It's nothing to do with whether Cockles they feel like it. crow whenever they feel like it. <laughs> I think, read I that think you, just, you just... Not, you notice it more at dawn because it's quiet and you're in bed asleep. No, that's not true. Cockles don't crow at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, they do. No, they don't. What? They uh, do, Rob. I'll refer you to... No, they don't. I'll refer you back to Exhibit A. <laughs> Cockles crow whenever they feel like it. No, they don't. <laughs> they crow at dawn. They only crow at dawn. It doesn't matter where they, they crow at dawn. 
that's it. They, grow. they know what if time it is. If it says it on the screen, it's it true. Cockles grow whenever they feel like it. That's it. Yeah, Press, the button. Press the button. Do you, David Tennant, believe that cockles grow when they feel like it? Cockles grow whenever they feel like it. Do it's you believe that? Do you believe that? Don't push do me. You believe Don't that? push me. Do you believe that? Don't push do me. Do you believe that? I know they feel do like you growing and that? they... Yes, they only grow in the morning and get in. Do you believe that? It's all true. Whatever you say, I give in. I'm closing the computer. It's over. <laughs> So we've had it authenticated. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Authenticating the fact my... So birds, I see, this is why all, all good reasons why I think birds are more important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and where would we be without owls? <laughs> <laughs> tell me, please, back me up, that without birds you would have so many vermin and insects and everything, we'd be overrun, our food chain would be destroyed. Just tell me what you want me to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just find me a fact about birds being important to the environment because of vermin and, and... Fish are used in the production of a lot of lipsticks, but now birds have got their claws into the beauty market too. The Geisha Facial, available in a New York beauty salon for $180, contains powdered nightingale droppings. <laughs> the powder is rich in the amino acid guanine, which is said to brighten and cleanse skin. Is that something you'd go for, Rita? If it worked, yes. Would you? It's good, yeah. Really? Yeah. You'd have bird poo on your face. Yeah. <laughs> Would you really? Yeah. So have you ever used anything weird like that? I probably have used loads of things weird like that. There's all sorts of stuff in, in makeup. Who knows? <laughs> like, looks good. Because there's a on. fish pedicure thing that I. Mm. Have, you, have you seen there that? Is... I've had it done. Have you? In, um, but not in, not, in a, not in a shop. I was on holiday in Mexico with my wife, and there are these pools where you put your feet in, and the fish come up and they nibble at all the bits of dead skin. And we just sat there with our feet in the pool, and these little like, little fish and then bigger fish would come up, and then they'd start nibbling at your feet. It's like a really low budget version of Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> now, but Adam, uh, I mean, you'll know why I'm sort of looking at you quizzically because I know certain things about you that not everybody else might know. And okay, I have an artificial right foot, so I've kind of. So you had a fish pedicure, <laughs> and a rubber foot. <laughs> I, I want to know: Did they give you a fifty percent discount? <laughs> The funny thing was, I actually took, I took my foot off and left it aside. <laughs> of course you did! Of course. I love it when you say things like that. So I had my, my left foot in and I had the stump hanging in and there were other tourists that had turned up. And I was... <laughs> 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 you know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever heard of bird and fish makeup, Greg? Have you ever used it? Have you ever tried it? Have you got your own range? No, not only have I heard of it, Rod, I've been giving this some thought and I have... Uh... I have created my own uh, bird and fish makeup range. <laughs> have you? Yeah. What? What? <laughs> what it's just a way of using birds and fish to transform someone. <laughs> you reckon you could make Lloyd into a. Uh... Do you know what? I think I could. Come on, Lloyd. <laughs> And ready, ready for his fish bird uh, makeover, please welcome Lloyd! <laughs> First, I'll take from the, uh, from the bird kingdom a lovely beak, I thought. <laughs> lovely beak for Lloyd. That's it. <laughs> That's an interesting new look, isn't it? Tell you what. It's like it's been made for him. I suppose I should counteract that with something from the kingdom of the sea. Perhaps <laughs> lovely lobster. <laughs> lovely lobster. Can you do some kind of crab sporran? <laughs> got a couple of crabs here, we'll give that. <laughs> Talking of crabs, have a look Talking at this baby crabs, here. Where's his, where's his bonnet? Look at that lovely little crab bonnet. <laughs> <on> little... <laughs> that looks nice, doesn't it? I tell you what, you do scrub up well, Lloyd. <laughs> so what's this we're doing now? Talk us through it. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Nice, isn't it, Lloyd? <laughs> hey, Rhea, can you give me that? 
<laughs> Can you come and do Lloyd's body while Greg does exposed areas? <laughs> Lloyd, I know you feel stupid right now, but just remember this. Although you might feel like a bit of an idiot, you actually look like Lady Gaga. <laughs> Really nice in the back, Lloyd. Look at that. Oh, hold on here. Yeah. Keep it going. Build it up. Oh. <laughs> Peter, watch his tail. I think, like, to be honest with you, I think my look's almost complete. <laughs> He's starting to look like a Doctor Who monster, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> Except he looks a little bit angrier than a Doctor Who monster. He's half bird, half fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's the evil Bursch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the evil Bursch. The evil Bursch. <laughs> I think we need something to go head to head with the evil burst, Mr. Tennant. Yeah, but come on. What, what, what would my weapons be? Well, I would have thought, David, with your background, you would already know that. Well, I know. Everybody obviously, knows I know that the evil burst can only be fought using a good old-fashioned arm wrestle. I am ready. Go to it, my boy. Dave, ladies and gentlemen, David Tennant takes on the evil burst. <laughs> Crab cod piece, Tennant. Get in his face! <laughs> hey, hey! Oh, oh the crab oh, Take your official possession, gentlemen, please. And no touching his crab sporran. Let's get, uh, get Evil Birch's magnificent headpiece on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the Evil Birch versus David Tennant? <laughs> David Tennant! Ready! Ready! Evil Birch! Ready? I'm not evil, I'm just misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Birch. Three, two, one, up! Give it up for the evil bird! <laughs> and David Tennant, ladies and gentlemen, are defeated! <laughs> okay, have you got any final facts for us this evening that can if decide? anyone still cares, I care. Professor Steve Redpath at Aberdeen University says that among, between fish and birds, it's fish. No! <laughs> if you were to take birds out of the world, our ecosystems would continue to function. But if you were to remove the fish from our seas, then the marine ecosystem would collapse. Fish are more important to this planet. Well, that's pretty much it for tonight. So, people of Britain, if you've got a question, you can tweet the show. But for tonight, it is thanks to Rita Simon. <laughs> Adam Hill, Greg Davis, my flatmate, the evil Bush, and of course the authenticator, David Tennant. <laughs> Tune in next week when we'll be asking more questions. I'm Rod Gilbert, and you can ask me literally anything. Good night. <laughs>《More Chat and Banter from Rod Gilbert's radio show. Download his best bits on the BBC Radio Wales website. And the Welsh songbird Charlotte Church is up next on BBC One enjoying the crack with Graham Norton.